Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jay, and today we're gonna have a little bit of fun in the kitchen. It is February. We have gotten through January, and I have been feeling so uplifted lately. Praise God, I have been in such a good mood, and I just am feeling so optimistic for the future. Um, and I was scrolling on Instagram today, and I know social media can be negative, but sometimes I leave Instagram just feeling so inspired. And that was me this morning, and I thought to myself, what can I learn to do today to prepare me for this homesteading farming future that I so badly desire and I decided for fun um, we're gonna try to make pop tarts today I have never made them before we're gonna learn together today but I've been coming to you guys and talking to you about the importance of organic eating and um, cooking from scratch at home baking from scratch at home and how when you do that you're taking the control out of the grocery distributors hands and into your own and so that's what we're gonna do today brown sugar pop tarts are Oh, a guilty pleasure of mine. Every time I pass them in the grocery store, I have to talk to myself out of purchasing them. I love them, I've been eating them since I was in high school when I was able to purchase them myself because my mom didn't really let us have Pop-Tarts. Um, and so that's what we're gonna try and do today, brown sugar Pop-Tarts. Um, I am going to use Sally's Baking Addiction website. She's got a recipe for this exact thing, brown sugar Pop-Tarts, um, and I'm gonna follow her recipe exactly. For the Pop-Tart um, itself, the pastry, she uses her um, crust, her pastry pie crust recipe, and that's what the um, Pop-Tart is made of. And she does use a half butter, half shortening recipe. So just know that if you don't like baking with shortening, you can do an all butter pie crust and that's fine. I don't have a lot of uh, pie crust experience. I've actually only made it once, pie crust, and it wasn't a fail, but it wasn't great. So I'm just gonna follow her recipe exactly so that I can have as, as much success as possible. But just know, again, you can use an all butter pie crust if you want. Everything else is very whole ingredients, very ingredients that you would find in your pantry. And so these Pop-Tarts, although they're not going to taste exactly like the store-bought ones, are going to be a much healthier alternative to the store-bought ones. And when I say healthier, I'm not referring to calories because these have sugar, these have butter, these have carbs, but they don't have all of those additives and fillers and preservatives that they have in the grocery store. So let's go ahead and get started. I have to leave in about 20 minutes to go to a doctor's appointment. So we're gonna go ahead and make the pastry because it needs to chill in the fridge for 30 minutes to two hours, the recipe says, and I'll be gone about an hour, so that's perfect. We wanna start by combining the flour and the salt. So get yourself a big bowl. We need two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And you really want to spoon and level your flour because a big mistake that can be made when you are making pie crust is having too much flour and then your um, crust can be very dry and it can uh, be crumbly and it can crack so you want to make sure that you're uh, having the right amount of flour so we're just going to kind of level it off here I'd like to get uh, containers with a wider mouth because this mouth is very small and I always end up making a mess. So there's one cup, you're doing two and a half cups. Next up, you wanna add about a teaspoon of salt to your flour. And I'm just gonna use my whisk to give that a little stir here. Now for the next step, I have something called a pastry cutter. I got this real cheap off of Amazon. I'll have it linked below. If you don't have one of these, you can just use two forks. But I have six, six tablespoons of unsalted butter that I cut up into cubes and this came right out of the freezer. These pieces are very cold and you want that. So I'm gonna add that in there. And then I also have my two thirds cup of shortening. You cannot, she said in her recipe that if you're wanting to use all butter, that's not an exact trade. She has a different recipe for an all butter pie crust. So if you have a pie crust that you like to use, you're free to use that in this recipe. Um, the rest of the recipe doesn't have anything to do with this part. Um, there are three different recipes. You've got the pie crust, you've got the filling, and you've got the frosting, and those are three separate recipes. So use your own favorite pie crust recipe for this. If you don't like to use shortening, that's totally fine. And I, I probably won't in the future, but like I said, I don't have a ton of experience with that, so I just wanna use what she's using just this first time that I make these. 
And then you just use your pastry cutter or your two forks and you get in there and you get your flour salt combined with your butter and your shortening and uh, you want to get it combined so that you have coarse pea-sized crumbles. So I'm going to go through and work on that here. Takes a little bit of elbow grease. So we've got kind of coarse crumbles here and they're sort of pea-sized. This one's a little bit bigger which is okay. This is kind of the size you're going for. Now you might be thinking you look like you've done this before. What's the problem? This is where I lose it. This is the part that was difficult for me last time. You need to get half a cup of water and you want to add an ice cube to it because you want your water to be real cold. And then you need to drizzle your water into your butter flour mixture one tablespoon at a time. Yep, one tablespoon at a time stirring it with a large spatula after every tablespoon of water. And you don't want to add any more water than you need, so you might not use the entire half cup. I added way too much water last time, and that's where I lost it. So we're going to go ahead and drizzle in one tablespoon. And I'm going to go ahead and get that kind of mixed around. Obviously, you can assume you're going to need you know, several tablespoons, but you just want to do it slowly so that you're able to really directly monitor what it's looking like. You want to stop adding water when the dough begin, begins to clump together. So this is our second tablespoon. All right, I just added my tenth tablespoon of water, and you can tell that the dough is starting to really clump together, and it's not quite as floury looking anymore. And so what I'm gonna do to test this and see if it's ready to move on to the next step is take my hands and see if I can roughly get this to shape into a ball and stay in a ball. And I can, you see that? If this was still very floury, it would just, you know, fall like sand back into the bowl, but I'm able to shape this. So I'm gonna say that this is good. You do not want to handle the dough more than you have to because you want it to stay cold. So I'm gonna clear a spot here and add a little bit of flour to my clean work surface. We're gonna empty our bowl. And I'm gonna just try to form it into a ball here. I want all of this to come together. Your dough should not feel sticky, but it should also fairly easily come together for you, which it, it is much better this last time. Last time I already, I knew from this step that I had messed up because this was sticky. It was sticking to the counter and I knew I had added too much water. So that was my problem for that one. As you're rolling it out, you can see the little bits of butter and fat that you have. And that's what you want for a really nice flaky crust. And the reason you don't want to handle it too much is because you want, you don't want it to melt outside of the baking process. You want it to melt during the baking process because that's what gives you all of those nice buttery flaky layers in a crust. So I've got a couple stragglers here. Again, you don't want to overhandle your dough. So I'm just going to try and get these little stragglers here to stick in there. Okay, I think just like any of these skills, the more I do it, the more I'll get a feel for what's correct because now I'm, th I'm wondering if this is even like too dry, not enough water because it is like not coming together super well, but it is what it is. We're going to give it a shot. And like I said, the more I do it, the more I'll get a sense for what's right and what feels right. So now you want to divide your ball in two. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at all of those layers of butter and fat in there. Oh, yes. Did I divide that evenly though? Definitely did not. Can I get it to stick back together? I'm really not good at proportions. I'm not good at guessing when something is even. That is not a strong suit of mine. All right, let me try that again. You want it to be even because you're you're dividing it in two and one of one's gonna be the top of your pop tart and one's gonna be the bottom. So I really would like for this to be pretty even. So let me see. I'm terrible at this. Still not even, but it's more even. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna stop fooling with it. 
And then you just want to form these into discs and wrap them separately in cling wrap and put them in the fridge to chill. And uh, for 30 minutes to two hours, and I'm just gonna let them chill for however long I'm at the doctor for, gone to the doctor. All in all, this step really didn't take that long. And now I have pie crusts. So if I weren't using these today for a recipe, these can be stored in your freezer for up to like three months, I think. Um, and so I could totally see how it would be easy to double this triple it even and knock out a whole bunch of pie crusts and get those stored up in the freezer. So I think um, now that I've had a couple times of practice with this, maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll um, make a big batch and store those in the freezer for the future. Okay, I'm back. It is much later. It's almost three o'clock. <laughs> um, I went to my appointment. I went, stopped and visited my mom. I ate some lunch. I took a nap, <laughs> but we're, we're back and we're gonna finish this. Um, one little thing, I ordered a book off of Amazon that came in the mail um, in between the last time I hit record and now, and I just wanted to show it to you guys. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to. It's called Good and Beautiful and Kind. It's by Rich v Velados. Velados? Velados? Um, it's a Christian book, and it's uh, I'll just to read a little bit of the back, it says, We long for a good life, a beautiful life, a kind life but clearly that's not the world we live in. We carry the stress of our fractured world in our bodies and relationships. Families that once gathered around tables have co uh, converted those tables into walls. Hostility, rage, and offense is the language of our culture. How did we lose goodness, kindness, and beauty? And more important, how do we get them back into our lives? So I just thought it sounded like a really good uplifting read for this time of the year. And I've been working so hard on working on um, myself and my, my inside, and I just thought, let's read something that will help that along. So I just wanted to mention that this came in the mail. It's a pretty short read. I usually read pretty hefty books, so I think this will probably just take me a couple of evenings at work. Anyway, um, so the next step with our Pop-Tarts, we've got, I took out one of the dough discs, and it's been sitting on my counter for almost 15 minutes. You want it to kind of warm up a little to make it a little easier to work with, but only a little. Um, and I've got my clean work surface here. I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of flour, and we're gonna get to it with these Pop-Tarts. I'm a little nervous, but I'm also excited um, to see how they, they turn out. This is the part of baking where it's a little artsy, I wanna say. I think it really does come down to, anybody can do it, but if you have a certain finesse about you, you'll be more successful because we need to, you know, make these actually look like Pop-Tarts. I'd like to anyway, but my first time making it, so I'm not gonna set my expectations too high. I have a cough drop in my mouth, so sorry. All right, we are gonna roll our disc into approximately a nine by 12 rectangle. Let's see how well this does. I can see all of my butter and fat in here, and I think that's wonderful. That makes me really happy. That means that we have not over um, handled our, our uh, pie crust. You want this to be about an eighth of an inch thick. And I say that so confidently, but I never know. I never know what that looks like. <laughs> Eighth of an inch sounds to me like it would be real, real thin. Let's try this and see. And if I don't have enough, I might have enough scraps that I can roughly form another one. We're supposed to get nine out of this. So I think I have kind of a nine by 12 here and I want to trim my edges so that they're clean. So I'm gonna choose kind of the farthest edge here that will give me, there we go. And I'm, you, you might notice I'm using my pizza cutter. That's what she recommended to use to cut this and it's working really well. All right, so I've got a square here. So you want to cut it into thirds. And then you want to cut it into thirds again. Okay, 
I can already tell this isn't perfect. So I cut it into thirds and then I cut it into thirds again. Now you want these to be roughly three by four inches. And I've got this cute little bookmark that I love. She believed she could, so she did. So cute. And it's got a ruler on the back, so I'm gonna use it. Here we've got, so this is exactly three and this is the side that's supposed to be four. So I definitely don't have it long enough. This is supposed to be three and this is only two. Let's try this one. So this one's about, this is exactly three and a half and it's gonna be the same length as the other one. So it's gonna be, yeah, that one's a little bit closer to two. So these definitely aren't the right size, but as long as I can keep the other one consistent, the other disc, then this will be fine. This one obviously is gonna be way too small, right? Um, so I might have to finagle this one a little bit, but these I'm gonna call good. So the reason I made that call is because if you remember, you wanna handle this as little as possible. So to get the size right, it's not worth the amount of handling this dough would take to get it there. So I'm gonna go ahead and say two by three is fine, and I'll just do my best to make sure the other, the tops are also two by three. So here I have a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, and we're just going to get these lined up on that baking sheet. So, got a metal spatula and I'm just gonna very carefully try to get these up off my counter. Um, they're gonna be very fragile, so take your time, there's no rush. These don't really expand much in baking, so you are safe to put them fairly close together and you should definitely be able to fit them all on one, you know, decently sized baking sheet. I've got them all squared up and on my cookie sheet. They're not perfect. Some of them are a little bigger than others, but I really think it's gonna work out fine because once I do this second dough ball that I already have sitting out of the fridge, um, I think I'll be able to, <clears throat> excuse me, match up the smaller ones with the smaller ones and the bigger ones with the bigger ones. Now, while I'm working on this second one, this needs to go in the fridge because remember, we're trying to keep our dough as cold as possible. So I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. I'm gonna roll out and cut the second dough ball just like I did this first one. All right, you guys, I've got both baking sheets of the, the pastry in the fridge staying nice and cold. We're gonna go ahead and get the filling put together. It's real easy. You're gonna put half a cup of brown sugar into a mixing bowl, packed by the way, packed brown sugar, and it doesn't matter if it's light or dark, up to you. We're gonna add one tablespoon of all-purpose flour and two teaspoons of cinnamon. Remember that we're making the brown sugar cinnamon pop tarts. Um, so the filling part is up to you. You don't have to do this. You could do like, um, I was reading the comments and people did like some uh, strawberry jam. You could do like a, like an apple butter. There's all sorts of Nutella, peanut butter. You can do whatever you want for the filling. But I, brown sugar, cinnamon are my favorite pop tarts. So I'm excited to see how these ones turn out. So I've got my whisk here and I'm just gonna mix all that together here. Mmm, I love how that smells. Oh, so good. Brown sugar and cinnamon go so well together. Man, I really hope these turn out. My hopes are high. <laughs> Next up, we need to make an egg wash. So I'm gonna use one large egg, crack it into a little bowl, and you wanna add just a splash of milk. All right, now I'm gonna take out my first set of pastries here. And we are gonna take our egg wash, and I've got this little um, pastry brush, but you could just use a spoon. And you want to coat the entire surface of each of these with your egg wash, and this is gonna act like the glue that holds them together. All right, you guys, at this point, I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I've got this bottom part of our Pop-Tart glazed with the egg wash. Now we're gonna put about a tablespoon of the filling in here. Remember that mine are a little smaller than what the recipe said, so I may not do quite a teaspoon, or a tablespoon, I mean, um, but something like that. And you just wanna spread it around on the Pop-Tart, leaving about a fourth of an inch of space so that you can seal your Pop-Tart. And although I've never made these before, I have a feeling that you really wanna try and do that because I think that's where we could really lose this 
recipe in terms of it like legitimately being a fail if they don't seal properly I think that that could be a real issue so I'm gonna take real care to try and make sure that I leave myself enough of an edge to seal these babies you guys I'm getting really excited about these pop tarts look at this that's fun I'm really excited about that so all right this is all set for now so now we want to get out the second one and we want to wash this with the egg wash as well. So I'm going to do that here quick. Okay. I have these all washed up. Now here is the part that I'm nervous about. I have to play matchmaker here and try to pick which one of these I think will fit on these. And I can already tell some of these are not, very big so I'm gonna have to just do the best I can here and try to match these up so you want to egg wash side down on top of the filling and then you want to kind of press down with your fingers to get it to seal so this first one looks great and you know, if these don't all come out perfect, I'm not going to cry about it. It's not a big deal. I'm just learning how to do this. It's my first time. But yeah, I kind of figured this was where I was. If I was going to make any mistakes, it'd be here. Um, trying to get these to all line up and match up. Once you've got the tops on the bottoms and you've secured those by pressing around the edges, you just want to take a fork and line the edges and you don't even really have to do this, but it helps them seal and it gives them a really nice look. Um, I'm going to take a toothpick. You want to poke holes in the top of your pastries to allow steam to escape. So she says in her recipe that she just pokes a few holes with a toothpick and that that does the trick. And then after you've poked holes in your pastry, you wanna put these back into the fridge and let them rest anywhere from 20 minutes to an hour, her recipe says. And Tom's gonna to be home soon, so I'm honestly probably gonna let these rest while we eat some dinner. Um, I'm getting really hungry and I'll probably bake these after dinner because I'm not in any kind of rush. These were just for fun. So I think that's probably what I'm gonna do. All right, so uncovered, I'm gonna stick these in the fridge. So I guess that means I'm realizing that I already preheated my oven because I, I did read this recipe through a couple times before I started today, but I forgot about the chilling in the fridge step. So I'm actually gonna turn my oven off because it's probably gonna be over an hour. If it was only gonna be 20 minutes, I'd leave it on, but it's gonna be over an hour, so I think I'm gonna turn it off. All right, you guys, it is time to finish these up. So we are gonna take these out of the fridge, and by the way, they've been chilling for me well over an hour at this point, um, but you really only need 20 minutes. And then you are going to take that remaining egg wash that you have, and you're gonna just brush the tops of these, and doing that's gonna give it that real nice golden brown color, and they're gonna look really pretty. I've got my oven preheated again to 350 degrees, and once you have these brushed with the egg wash, you put them in your preheated oven and you bake them for, she says in her recipe, 22 to 28 minutes. Um, and she says to rotate them halfway through. Um, and you're looking for that real nice golden brown color and that's how you know that they're done. So that's what I'm about to do. And then after they are finished baking, you wanna let them cool on the pan for uh, five minutes. She doesn't give any explanation, but I imagine that so they can kind of set because if you tried to pick them up off the pan right after they were done, they would likely um, fall apart. So if you give them a few minutes to cool, they'll be easier to transfer. You wanna transfer them to a wire rack uh, and let them cool completely. So likely what I'll do is, um, once I have done everything I just described to you and I've got them cooling on a wire rack, I'll come back um, and we'll make the glaze together while they're cooling. All right, you guys, so those are out of the oven and they are on my wire rack over here cooling. So now we're gonna go ahead and make our frosting. We're gonna, to just a, a clean bowl, we're gonna add 3 4th a cup of powdered sugar. We're gonna add a splash of vanilla. About half a teaspoon of cinnamon. This kind of stuff doesn't really have to be super exact. 
And then we're gonna start with one tablespoon of milk. We're gonna see if we like the consistency of that. And if we do, we're good. If not, we need to add either more milk or more powdered sugar, depending on what we get. You want something that is thick, but not so thick that you can't spread it. This kind of frosting will harden, which is what we want. So obviously because of that, you don't want it to be too thin, right? I'm kind of thinking the thicker the better, but again, you have to be able to spread it. Yeah, I think this can actually even be thicker. So I've got it all mixed together and look at how thin that is. So I think I'm gonna add a bit more powdered sugar, maybe like two tablespoons worth and see what that gets us. Probably because of the vanilla. I think the recipe said half a teaspoon of vanilla and I definitely put in more than that. So that's probably why this came up a little thin for me. So this is definitely just a ratio game and you're just playing with it to get what you want. Yeah, this is perfect. Definitely on the thicker side. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm looking for. And I wanna show you what we ended up with here. They're so pretty. Okay, hold on, there we go. They're so pretty. Look at that nice, golden brown kind of glaze that it's got going to it because of the egg wash and the bottoms are perfect they didn't get burnt or anything the edges sealed up really nice thanks to that egg wash so they definitely don't look like the store-bought ones but they're really solid and I think they look awesome so let's go ahead and throw some glaze on this one and then we're gonna taste test it Oops, so be really careful when you're glazing them because it looks, I have a little hole in that one now, so just be careful. Not a big deal or anything, but I'm just gonna fill it with frosting. All right, handsome Tom, come here, please. What do we got here? So, you might have to, can you get in there? So I made homemade Pop-Tarts. Oh, okay. Homemade brown sugar Pop-Tarts. And um, they're definitely gonna be different from the store-bought ones, right, because they're homemade but they don't have any junk in them, except I did use vegetable shortening um, Crisco, and that's kind of like not great for you, but none of the additives, preservatives, anything like that. So these are definitely like better for you. They're still, they're still sweet, right? But they're better for you. So we're gonna taste test this. Okay. This will harden, but it's not hard right now because I just put it on there. And I haven't tried this yet either, so. Definitely more like a pastry. It's not hard like a Pop-Tart but you can see the filling in there. And it's a brown sugar Pop-Tart. You've had those before, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to show you. Yeah, it definitely does not have the texture of a regular Pop-Tart. No, but it's still good. Mm-hmm. Very flaky. Maybe you just gotta let it harden a little bit. Maybe. Very flaky, but it, it has that brown sugar cinnamon flavor for sure, and it tastes really good. Does the crust part taste good? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. Okay. So... If I made these somewhat regularly, you wouldn't mind eating them? Nope. You like them? Yep. They get a thumbs up? Thumbs up. The fact that you are going to be eating these, and I likely will not buy store-bought Pop-Tarts anymore, especially because I've been like doing mostly organic, do you feel like this is a trade-off that you can accept, or are you going to buy Pop-Tarts and hide them in your car? <laughs> I don't eat that many Pop-Tarts, <laughs> but yeah, yes, I could substitute it. Okay, cool. One question though. Yeah. Could you put it in the toaster? I don't think so. I don't, I'm not sure. She said in her recipe that she wasn't sure if they could go in the toaster, but they can go in the toaster oven. True. Uh -huh. Aha. <laughs> All right. It gets a thumbs up from the hubby. So there you go. <laughs> Thanks, babe. No problem. This was fun. This was a fun experiment. Yeah? Yeah. I think they turned out pretty good for my first time and they look nice. 
somebody uh, somebody made these and just yeah it was a recipe that I found online I don't know I don't know what it like made me want to do it today I just kind of had the idea and I was like I'll film that mm. that's kind of how my channel works I just randomly get ideas whoops almost signed off without saying goodbye uh, I'm gonna go through and frost these and then uh, you can store them in the fridge for, I don't remember how many days, like a week I think. Um, but you can also store them in the freezer as well. And you can either heat them up in your oven or if you have a toaster oven. Like I said, I'm not sure about the actual toaster itself. But um, they store in the fridge or the freezer. Uh, it did not say room temperature, so I'm going to keep these in the fridge. But uh, anyway, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today while we tried something new in the kitchen. This was a win. I'm really excited about this. I love learning these new skills. It definitely makes me feel a lot more confident in the kitchen and the fact that I can say, oh yeah, I, I know how to make homemade Pop-Tarts. That's just really cool, you know? So sometimes you just have to get in the kitchen and give it your best shot. And sometimes things work better the second, third, fourth time you try it. Like with me doing pie crust for the second time, it went a lot better than when I did it the first time. So you just have to try and get yourself out there. So. Um, thanks so much for hanging out with me today, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Be blessed, my friends. Bye.